I'm Nancy Carrier. I'm part of the Partner Enablement Team here at Acumatica. Today I'll be discussing retainage in Acumatica's Construction Edition. When we're talking about retainage, we're referring to a portion of an agreed-upon price that is withheld until contractual obligations are satisfied. Retainage can be applied to both AP bills and AR invoices. Today we'll look at an example of each. First, we'll look at an example of a subcontractor that we have hired. They've agreed to 5% retainage. When they send us a bill, we will only pay 95% of the total amount, but we'll record the retainage, the other 5%, because it's still a liability. We still need to pay it at some point in the future. I'm going to go over here to my construction workspace and click on subcontracts. Let's take a look at my subcontract with Spectrum Painting. For each vendor, you can specify a default retainage percent. I've clicked on the pencil at the end of the vendor field to bring up the vendor record. You'll notice there's a section on the bottom right of the vendor record that shows retainage settings. This vendor has 5% retainage set. This retainage percent will apply to all purchase orders, subcontracts, and vendor bills. Keep in mind, this is just a default setting for this vendor. You can always override the default value when entering transactions. Let's go back to our subcontract. On the subcontract, and this would work exactly the same on a purchase order, the retainage percent and the retainage amount get pulled in based on the vendor default but I can easily override both the percent and the amount fields if necessary. You might have noticed these little yellow alerts. When I hover over an alert, we can see that this project has some expired compliance documents. Let's say that we receive a vendor bill for this subcontract. Right from the subcontract, I can use the Actions menu and select Enter AP Bill. Here is the bill that was created. It pulled in all the information from my subcontract, so there's never a need for duplicate entry. The red asterisk indicates a required field. We need to enter a vendor invoice number. If this bill were for a partial amount of the subcontract, I would just change this unit cost and the retainage amount would recalculate. Since we're receiving a bill for the full subcontract amount, I will just leave the full amount. Our retainage percent is pulled over from the subcontract, so you can see the 5% and it calculates 5% of the total bill. So we see a retainage amount of $4,038. This leaves us with an amount to be paid of $76,722. Just to the right of the amount, you can see the project, the subjob, and the cost code have also been pulled in from that subcontract, and the subcontract number is displayed on the far right. In this example, my bill only had one line item, so all the retainage is applied to this one line. If you had multiple line items, you could choose the amount of retainage per line. Over here, we have a tab for retainage. This tab displays retainage summary information for this specific bill. You can see the default retainage percent. You can see the total amount of the bill, the amount of retainage. You can see unreleased retainage or the retainage that doesn't yet need to be paid because the work isn't finished. And you can also see paid and unpaid retainage for this bill. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Notice that our balance is up here in the heading, the $76,722. This is the amount that must be paid based upon the agreed upon terms, which in this example is 30 days. I'm gonna take my transaction off hold, and you'll notice that my status immediately changes to pending approval. In Acumatica, you can enforce the electronic approval of transactions by using approval maps. Approval maps are configurable rules that can be set up and applied to a transaction. For example, you might have a rule that routes a vendor bill 
under $5,000 to a purchasing manager, but if it's over $5,000, it gets routed to the CFO. Authorized approvers can indicate their approval from right here on the transaction. From the actions menu, I can either approve or reject. You'll notice those are my only options. Nothing can be, be done with this bill until it's approved. Approvers can receive email notifications regarding approvals. Approvals are also visible from dashboards and from the mobile app. I'm going to go ahead and release this transaction. In Acumatica, anytime we click on the release button, it means the same thing as post to the GL. Notice that the status is now open. This vendor bill will get queued up in our regular AP payment process. Down here on the financial details tab, there's a hyperlink to the journal entry that was created. You can see that this bill was correctly coded to accounts payable, retainage payable, and the subcontractor expense account. Let's fast forward a little bit. Let's say the subcontractor has completed the work to our satisfaction and at this time we want to release retainage and pay that retained amount. When I say release retainage, I just mean we're going to create a bill for that amount that's been withheld. That bill will get included in the regular AP payment process. To release retainage, right here from my vendor bill, I can go to the actions menu and at the bottom I'm going to select release retainage. This takes me to the release AP retainage page. On this page you can see a list of all retained amounts. In this example the page is filtered by vendor and by reference number because I accessed this page directly from the vendor bill. You can also access this page from the payables workspace. That'll give you an unfiltered list of all bills that include retainage. You have some choices when it comes to releasing retainage. You don't have to release all the retainage at once. You can use the percent to release and the retainage to release fields to indicate a partial amount or partial percent. Remember, when we release retainage, we're creating a vendor bill. Vendor reference is a required field on a vendor bill, so we need to enter a reference number in the retainage vendor reference column. I'm going to use my original vendor reference and just append an R to the end of it. To create the new retainage bill, I'm just going to click on process, which creates the new bill. Let's take a look at the retainage bill. Here's my retainage bill. Notice that right in the middle of the header, this bill is identified as a retainage bill. I'm going to take this bill off hold. I'm going to go ahead and approve it. And then I will release the bill or post it to the GL. Down here on the financial details tab, I'm going to drill down into the journal entry that was created. You can see that we've credited accounts payable because this is now an amount that we need to pay and we've debited retainage payable, basically clearing out that retained amount. Let's go back to our original bill. Remember that retainage tab that I mentioned earlier? The summary information is still right up here at the top, but now you can see any retainage bills that have been created are listed out right down here at the bottom. The last thing I want to mention before we move on to tracking retainage from the AR side is a retainage report. 
Let's look at the AP Retainage Register report. For this report, you can select whatever time frame you would like the report to cover. Let's say I want to see it for the year, and then you just click on Run Report to generate the retainage report. This report is broken down by vendor, then by bill. From here, you can view all the retainage information for each bill. Let's take a look at accounts receivable retainage. We'll look at an example of a customer job that needs to be billed. Our customer has agreed to 5% retainage. That 5%, the retained amount, is a receivable and it needs to be recorded as an asset because we'll be receiving that payment at some point in the future. So I'm going to open a project and run billing to create a customer invoice. Here's my project. I'm on the summary tab. I'm going to scroll to the very bottom and you'll see that we have a field for retainage percent. This is your default AR retainage for this specific project. If to the header and look at the customer record, you can see the default retainage is 10%. But by using the retainage field on the summary tab, I can override the default from the customer record. This job is a progress billing. So on the revenue budget, you need to enter a completed percent. I've already entered percentages for the top two lines. When I invoice the customer, it will be with 5% retainage. You can see that I already have some pending invoice amounts. So when I run project billing, these are the amounts that will be included on the invoice. To create the customer invoice, I just go right up to the top and click on run project billing. This project has pro forma invoicing turned on so my pro forma invoice is displayed. You can see the retainage percent and the retainage amount have been pulled in. The header of the pro forma invoice shows the total progress bill amount, the retainage amount, and the amount due, which is the customer billing amount minus the retainage amount. If any changes need to be made, you can do so right here on the pro forma invoice. But if everything looks good, we can take the transaction off hold and click release to create the AR invoice. Let's take a look at that AR invoice. The AR invoice is currently in a status of balanced. I'm going to release this transaction, meaning I'm going to post it to the GL. Let's take a look at the financial details tab. Right at the top of the tab, again, there's that link to the journal entry that was created. It's easy to see that the retained amount has been correctly coded to the retainage receivable account. We've debited accounts receivable and retainage receivable and credited sales. Let's go back to our original invoice. Just like you saw on the vendor bill, the customer invoice also has a tab for retainage. You can see the summary information at the top of the tab. And once we release retainage and create the retainage invoice, you'll see the details of the invoice right down here. To release AR retainage right from here, I can use the actions menu and select release retainage. A pop-up box prompts you for information. Remember, you have some choices when it comes to releasing retainage. You don't have to release 100%. You can use the percent to release field and the retainage to release fields to indicate a partial amount or percent to release. I'm, in, I'm just going to release the entire amount, so I'll just click on release to create the retainage invoice. Note in the middle of the header, this invoice is clearly identified as a retainage invoice. The retainage invoice is currently in the status of balanced. I'm going to go ahead and release to post the transaction. 
on the financial details tab I can drill down to my journal entry that was created and you can see that we have debited accounts receivable because this is now an amount that we'll be receiving and we've credited retainage receivable effectively clearing out that retained amount. Now when I go back to my original invoice and look at the retainage tab we can now see the retainage invoice at the bottom. Let's take a look at a retainage report. I'm going to open the AR retainage register report. This is very similar to the AP retainage report that we already looked at. You can select whatever time frame you'd like this report to cover. I'm going to have my report span this year and all I need to do is click on run report to generate the retainage report. This report is broken down by both customer and project then by invoice. You can review all the retainage information related to each invoice. Today we looked at tracking retainage on payables followed by an example of tracking retainage on receivables. If you'd like more information about Acumatica please visit acumatica.com. Thank you.